yeah, it's going to be a hard day today, but I don't, I can't, I'm not dreading Monday morning, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, may want to sleep in, but I got, I'm building something. I'm building something here. I'm in construction. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you, uh, I want to connect that to this thought here. 622, Matthew 622. If thine eye be single, the whole body will be full of light. Yep. I believe that's your favorite passage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you went on a journey, you know, after the, it was either in the middle or at the end of the tail end of your rom-com, you know, stardom. And you went to, on a trip, you went on a journey with yourself. Yeah. I think for 20, 22 days, 22 days, uh, in the Amazon. Yeah. And there was a moment in the book where you talk about, essentially you had to kind of have a coming to, you know, moment with yourself where you had to shed all the identities yeah. that you were holding onto your rings, your heritage, your background, your clothes, your, I'm, the, I'm famous. I'm a rom-com guy. I'm an actor. I'm a, you had to shed all of it. Yep. And what was the thing that you found when you let go of your identity in the outer world? That I was a mammal. <laughs> <laughs> a mammal. And for me, as a believer, a child of God. Uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> uh, baseline. <laughs> <laughs> and the mammal we can all agree on, right? The child of God, that was for me and any other believers. But the b b baseline, I got okay. rid of, I remember my dad's ring, which yeah. had M on it, gold melted down from their, my mom and dad's class rings and gold from my mom's teeth. It meant a lot to me. Yeah. But it was an identity marker. I'm a McConaughey. This is about my dad. I had my American cap that I'd worn for two decades. I'm an American. So we get rid of that. Got rid of all these little talismans that were identities and titles. Yeah. That meant something. They weren't random. They were healthy ones. Yeah. But I stripped them all off. It was like, bull. And no, you're not famous. And no, it's not. A, you were what before you were ever an actor. Before, what are you? What were you? Before you were McConaughey. Before you were a Texan. Before you were an American. Before you were an actor. Before you were a movie star. Before you were a celebrity. What? What? Come on, get it all off. And I. And it was a purge, mm. basically. And I ended up. That was there. Was a. I was a naked, sweating mammal. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was like, you're a mammal, child of God. Uh -huh. And that's what you are. So mm. we've stripped off all the accoutrements. We've stripped off the ornaments. Here we are. And that is the night that I was like, this is happened a couple of times in my life. And I think this is important for us all to do so at some point. That's when I was like, okay. And what other truth do we know, McConaughey? Mm. Tell you what another truth I've been realizing right now is that you're the only son of a can't get rid of. Mm. So we're going to duke it out for the rest of our life here? Or are we going to figure out how to get along? Wow. What are we going to forgive right now? And what are we going to say the buck stops here? No more. I'm not putting up with it. Because I'm tired of playing crap with yourself, McConaughey. Cut the shit, man. Let's get along. I can't get rid of you. Everybody else, every other relationship out there is a choice. You're the one person I don't have a choice to hanging out with. So let's work this out. And just like going back and saying the embarrassment and shame turned into giggles, I began to go like, All right, man, maybe you're being too hard on yourself on this thing. You know what? Get that monkey off your back. You're human, man. Forgive mm. yourself. And these other things, dude, you've been a repeat offender. It hadn't been paying you back. Mm -hmm. You've been regretting that choice every time you make it and you keep freaking making it. Cut the man, evolve, turn the page. No more. And next morning, I remember even the, the Sherpas and stuff in Peru. I came out of the tent and they all started going, La Luz, La Luz. Light. The light, the light. And they were talking about me and the way I was moving. Interesting. And I went for a walk. And for the first time during that trip, I didn't give a damn what was around the, about what was around the next corner. You weren't thinking about the destination. I wasn't thinking about the destination of getting to the Amazon and how it's been 11 days. When are we going to get there? And mind you, this 11 days prior, I had not really been present in the trip because I was thinking about the result, getting to the destination so much. And then this morning, after that night, I'm walking. I'm not even thinking about what's around the next corner. And when I did turn the corner, 
I was stopped by this sea of atomic, plugged in neon blue, like a puddle, like a bubbling puddle in the middle of my jungle path. And it stopped me. And I looked at it, I've never seen colors this, mm. this neon and bright. It was like it was not man-made. It was glowing. I'm completely sober this time. No, I lost no peyote, no, this is straight eyed, right? <laughs> And it stopped me, and as I stared at it for about 30 seconds, all of a sudden it started to flutter and rise and dissipate. It was tens of thousands of these Amazonian butterflies. Wow. And I stayed there for a minute, and then this little word, words came into my brain from the prime mover that said, all I want is what I can see, and what I can see is in front of me. Mm. I was free, I was light, it was magical. I walked, I turned the corner, went down the trail, and there was the Amazon, I finally made it. I made it to the river, right after that moment. Wow. Did not know if I was still days away, weeks away, what. Now, stuff like that happens, we gotta listen. Yeah. Those are some of those truths that come that you go, nobody else was here to witness that. Mm. That was not for the whole class. That was not on the speaker. That was not on the bulletin. That was not on the nightly news. That was not even at church on Sunday with the congregation. That wasn't at school. That wasn't sitting around the dinner table with mom and dad learning lessons. It wasn't from a mentor. That was for me mm. in this moment. I must heed that truth. You've been on this journey of a lot of people seeing you on screen and your personalities on screen and your talent in characters. But now over the last three to four years, you've been revealing yourself more and more through your book, mm -hmm. through all of your amazing content online, all the interviews you've been doing and all the, the solo content, which I think is amazing. Please keep doing that. Oh, um, good. Thank you. I think it's amazing these lessons that you share. Um, but you're doing something coming up with a couple of buddies of mine, uh, Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins, where you're creating a, a live virtual event yeah. called The Art of Living, L-I-V-I-N. And we'll have all the information linked up below so you guys can just click on a link and get there and get registered. But if you guys go to lhliving.com, it'll take you right to this event. It's a free event, yeah. full, I think about a half day. You, Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, Trent Shelton, Marie Forleo are, are putting on this experience. Yeah. And I really call it an experience. I've watched some of the videos you guys have made behind the scenes. It's going to be incredible. So if you are listening, watching, or seeing a clip of this right now, run to lhliving.com. Sign up. It's 100% free. Yep. And you're going to be sharing a lot of wisdom and truth and, and lessons that you haven't shared in here and expanding upon it and yeah. new stories. You're gonna be expanding a lot on this. Where you know, Dean and Tony came to me and said, "Look, we we love green lights, and as as I wrote in the book, it's an approach, it's like book." And they said, "Would you be interested in getting into the process, like making it even uh, make it tangible tools for people to use that they can measure in circumstances?" I was like, "Yes." Yeah, so that's what we've been doing. That's what we're gonna get into the hood mm -hmm. of on the twenty fourth. Is how to make it something transformational, hopefully for you individually where you can see, oh, this is how I can utilize this in my life. Yes. You know, I talk about the green lights, yellow lights, and red lights, and the approach to them in there. That's the biggest question I've been asked since I put the book out. Yeah. Well, the green lights. I'm in the left lane. How do I trust this is a, this is, this is as good as it's supposed to be. Is this the right truth for me? Um, red lights. I can't stand it. What do you mean there's a gift in the red light? How's there a gift in the freaking red light? There is. Mm. Yellow light. How do I, the one where I got to make a choice to either slow down or put the pedal to the metal. What do I do? It's coming up. I feel it. I don't know what I do. Do I call an audible? Like, tell me to make the choice. All of explaining those things, we're going to explain a lot of the science to satisfaction, which will lead to the art of living. And the art is individual. The science is something we can each use and utilize and share, but the art will be yours individually for how you can use it and this and make it through this this dance called life or all in yeah i'm so excited i'm excited to attend myself and be there and if you are feeling stuck or if you feel like you're on the sidelines if you feel like you've got a really good life but you know there's something greater yeah. or if you feel like you're just moving and grooving and, and life is happening and it's all manifesting and attracting in, in a beautiful way 
This is for people who are in every situation in their yeah. life to keep on track if they're already moving and grooving. Yeah. If they're at a good life, but they're not getting to that greatness that they want, it's for them. And it's also for people that are stuck or feeling like they're on the sidelines. So yeah. make sure you sign up. It's gonna be an amazing free virtual event. You can watch it on your phone, at home, on the TV, anywhere it is, it's free. Sign up, lhliving.com, and we'll link all that up as well. You know, the last story you just told, you know, had the entire room just like in awe and in shock and just silent here as you were talking about this truth that you realized from within, essentially. You came mm -hmm. through God and you realized from within, no one was around you. And I, and I mentioned this quote before that, if thine eye be single, thy whole body will be full of light. Right. Matthew 6, 22. What does that mean to you? If thine eye be single, yeah. thy whole body will, will be, be full, full of light. And that light came to you in that moment. Yeah. And these Sherpas were saying, you know, la, la luz, la luz. You were radiating yeah. light yeah. after this came to yeah. you. Why is this your favorite passage? Oh. And, and what does it mean for you? And how can we start to step into that? So the Mandorla. This is what the men do all this. So we 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 see we're we so often are seeing life in contradictions, right? Future, the past, heaven, hell, technology, culture, and we see them as contradictions. And when in truth, that's that's two eyes, right? And there's mm -hmm. judgment on either side, and there's a duality there. But the truth. Mm. is in that third eye interesting where they overlap and that's not a shade so we go oh that's a shade of gray no it's not a shade of gray what the verse is saying what i get from it is that's where all the colors live mm. all the colors of the truth live. that passage when i always tell myself keep a high eye it's a, keep the high eye it's third eye it shows up in all the religions too yes. it shows up everywhere um it, it, it it's it's a way of perceiving the, the truth, I think, which lives in the paradox. And paradox is a word that some people go, oh, don't get into paradox. That's too, I don't know, academic or whatever. No, paradox is where it's, it's both are true. Two things can be true at the same time. It's today we could utilize it. It's like if I seek to understand you and where you're coming from first, I'm probably going to, before I under, seek to be understood, we don't usually... It has to do with listening. It has to do with how we see things. It's how it's it's how we judge. Um, we it's very easy, and especially today, I think we love to be judge and jury on others and ourselves. And it's a very arrogant thing for us to do. And this passage, if that I be single, mm. and not a dual contradiction, and seeing the contradiction, things have gone. Oh, this is true, and that's true, and instead of or, right. There's that's where the truth lives, I believe. Um, and it doesn't mean that you just straddle the fence and you're non-committal about anything. Right. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean you're you know, you're just Mister in between. So that's true and that's true and it's all okay. No, you can then have judgment, but see both first. See the overlap of the truth and understand it from both sides, and then be understood. And you can then have judgment, but see it through that lens first. Yeah. Because we just don't do it. We come in with one eye. Or we, me, us versus them. Me versus you. My idea versus yours. Left versus right. Democrat versus Republican. Even, how far can you go? Can you go down to right versus wrong, good versus bad? I mean, we, we see them as contradictions and they're, and, and they're not. We, we all know. We all got a little good in us. We all got a little bad in us. <laughs> it's a choice we make where we then have judgment. Um, so that passage has uh, elevated my POV mm. quite a bit. And, after, and it, it's one that I daily remind myself really? of. Um, if I'm getting a low eye on somebody, if I'm condescending people, if I'm objectifying people, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <whistles> High eye, buddy. Mm. Come on. Open that third eye. You're not, it's, not, it's not open. My kids can see it in my eyes when I'm talking to them. Yeah. If I'm talking at them, or if I stop and really look at them and maybe there's something, maybe it's a, it's a form of discipline. But then they can see if I'm looking at them like, I love you, man. 
And mm-hmm. this is why I'm trying to teach you this. All of a sudden they go, my son said it. I see your third eye fly. Really? 622. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I heard you. I didn't hear you before when you were mm-hmm. talking just at me. You know, so it's a great, it's it, it, it's a great reminder. Matthew yeah. 622. 